All right, guys. Anyhow, <sighs> this was all cleaned up a few days ago. It really was. It was empty. And the table was empty. And I was working on that, which was half empty. However, oh, real quick, this came in today or yesterday. Actually, came in late yesterday afternoon, late. Uh, this is uh, some fishing line. And uh, I needed something that was going to take some pounds. Uh, 250. And I went with the multicolor because I figured it'd be easier to see when it's flying over the tree and I have to look for it. Uh, so with the multicolors, I'm thinking, you know, if I ran a dark color, am I going to see it? You know what I mean? Uh, if I ran a light color, am I going to see it? Well, this is multicolor. Uh, they claim it to be all one straight piece, not four or five different colors. So we'll see. So anyway, I ordered that, so I got to get out there and uh, shoot that over the tree. As soon as I find a place to set it down, set it down. So anyhow, uh, I'm going through this again. Uh, I know I'm probably going to repeat myself a few times. I'll try not to do it too often. However, uh, Chris, across the street, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, left a message for me, and uh, the wife contacted him to find out what was the, you know, because I was at the doctor, the eye doctor, uh, cataracts, I got to cover that one, if I hadn't covered it, I'll cover it, but meanwhile, he was in a panic, well, he wasn't in a panic, he was excited, but panicky, uh, there's a, uh, an electrician uh, operation over here, pretty good size, been around for a long time. And they decided to clean up a little bit, clean house for the winter. Well, everybody knows Chris likes to collect things because he scraps it. You know, if there's aluminum, he'll crush it and scrap it. Iron, metal, whatever, he scraps it. Um, his place, uh, his garage, uh, is uh, two garages actually. Uh, one is a double, well, it's a big garage, let's put it that way. Um, but you can't even walk in his garage. I'm telling you, it's like this, you know, and he'll tell you right where every tool is or where every screw, every nut, every bolt. Anyhow, they dropped all this off at his place. And he said, come and take whatever you want. He wants to get rid of it all. Well, I went through it yesterday. I'm not going to go through it all again today and bore you with another half hour tape. Or longer, I don't know. Or video, that is. But I want to get some of this put away because I got things I got to do. And uh, at that point, uh, I got to do what I got to do here. So, we have another box here I have to go through here. Uh, I got... All this that has to be thrown out, these are empty boxes, because there's no sense having every one of these light shields were in its own box, which was this big, with tons of stuffing. So I said, you know what, I don't care if they get scratched a little bit, I'm going to use them out here, I don't give a shit. And I may not even use them, I may just crush them up and give them back to Chris. So, at that point, that's what I started to do. And then, after I thought I had all the boxes done, uh, well, I found another one. Another, uh, another bin. Another bin. So, let me move some of this stuff out of the way so we can kind of go through some of this. Okay, this is a remote. These are actually pretty good. I have one of these installed in our kitchen um, that I put up when we remodeled and put new cabinets in. I ended up with a, the over over the sink. I put cabinets as well. Um, so over the sink, the two cabinets left me about that much room space. 
So I had a board, a good facer board that I was able to put into it, the same as the cabinet. You buy cabinets, they give you extra pieces so you can fill in here and there. Uh, but I wanted to fill the bottom in. And I'm thinking, well, it's over the sink. Uh, there's no power anywhere there. So what am I going to do? So I hooked up one of these. And I have a light that was <laughs> really close to the width. It actually fit right up in there. And uh, the same length. And it has three bulbs in it. Um, and uh, it's a three intensities. You know, low, medium, and high. Um, and it's a low voltage. Yeah, it's low voltage. So, I, you know what? It'd be easier just to put up, up behind the cabinet, put a little electric box. And now I don't have to worry about running switches. So I tied that light into the electric box with this. And then... Now, I have an actual plate. This has two remotes. These are wireless. Um, yeah, it's wireless, by the way. But I have one that actually fits in a wall, like a plug or a switch would. And you can set it so that if you walk by it, it goes off. Uh, low, medium, high, off, and all that. And it runs off of a little 9-volt battery. So you don't even have to have power going to that. Uh, it's an ideal thing. And I think within the last 10 years, I may have changed the battery three times. <laughs> I mean, really. So, but these are ideal to have. Um, because they're a 110 remote, uh, wireless kind of remote. Now this light, it doesn't really need any special lighting. So I don't know why he used this one. Or why he had this in the bag with it but this is also a good light this is an LED this is uh well, I can't see the back but let me see some of these numbers on the parts here number 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 uh, 8.0220 boom, 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 boom. oh it's all good it's all AC 110 so, so I'm going to put it in there just for now. This, this was something out of everything. I kind of like that. I mean, I, I got a lot of good stuff here, believe me. Uh, if you watch the video that I'm going to post, it's a long video, but sorry about that. Okay, now these. I must have one, what a one, two, three, four so far. Now, again, I can put them all in one little box. Do I need all these boxes? No. What I do need to know, though, if it's a 110, if it's AC or DC. Okay, this is an AC unit. So, a lot of these boxes I can just get rid of. I don't need them all. Now, here's a box. With little parts in it. And a bag. And we all know how I feel. Oh, oh, now this is an interesting. Look at that. These are all rubber washers. Oh, yeah. These will come in handy for a lot of things. Including when I'm running power outdoors. Uh, or even in here. Yeah. Okay, so let me, uh, I got a place for this, but I'm just going to put them over there in the drawer for now. I actually, you know, well, you've seen it, I'm sure. I got that little container. Now, these are color-coded, all right, if you know, uh, <sighs> I can't remember now, but let's get, let's get rid of them. Let's put these in the drawer for now. There. This way I don't have to worry about the container. And what's in this little puppy? What's in this little puppy? It sounds like a relay. It is... It looks like a motor of some sort. No, okay. It is a switch, a relay. 
Okay, I'm going to put that back in the box because I'm going to need to know about that. What's this thing? Uh, this is an electronic key switch. Now, if there's no key, this is useless. What's this thing? It's another relay. Whoa! Now, this is a nice little unit. You can put that up over there. Uh, all this stuff. I, well, I take these here. What are those? Yes, are those acorns? They are. Acorn nuts. Uh, I've got a box, a drawer with acorn nuts. Carly's working. She went in early today. Today's her long day. Um, I don't want to. Uh, I don't know why or what I would have a use for with this switch, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't have the key anyway. That's not going to help me. And it's not electrical out here, but it looks like it's made for a switch on the back side. Well, you know what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to deep six it. I don't need it. Put these washers over here. More rubber washers. Now they can be used for a number of things. Okay. Put all the little stuff right here. Right there. What's this paper work for? Is it for one of those relays? No, this is for the switch. Okay. See that switch is that key switch that I was just. It's almost like you know uh, you have one guy over there with one key and the other guy over here with one key. You know, so when they want to, you know, they turn the keys. Well, some of these places have that with their timers and their lights, and everything is key. So they sometimes line up all the keys label them underneath um, actually uh, back in the uh, late 50s early 60s uh, early 70s I may have told you uh, my uncle uh, was involved with the building of the atom smasher at Yale University it's on Whitney Avenue behind the Peabody Museum they originally built it's underground but they went down, but they also brought the ground up. So it was kind of like this, but big. And then the front was the parking lot, and then Whitney Avenue. And on the back side, it was something else, I don't know. And the top part, they made it like a big, wide, double walkway. It had to be 20 feet wide or better. I mean, it was, it was a good size. It must have been 35, 40 feet high. Plus, it went in the ground. Um, they had since apparently made a parking lot to go over that but anyway uh, you go in there back then the whole place the, the control room was all dark you know and you were able to see you know when you walked into the door about 20 feet in front of you maybe more uh, well actually it was more than that I'm going to say about 40 feet You'd see this semi-round, not totally round, and then boom, at the end, uh, that's about 15 feet long, which is the control board for the reactors, the atom smashers, and, um, well, there was only one, and that's, and they had, that was all lit with dim lights, like, if you were to give it a watt, I would say they probably had a dozen uh, 25 watt bulbs you know above so you, you can see the panels but you're not getting blinded because you're also in a dark room so if it's too bright when you get up to move you're gonna be bumping into walls and uh, they used to have a lot of these switches in there for that that's what a lot of those gaskets are for as well this is gonna be a piece of scrap but for that okay 
and then mainly get off 